ES Audio. Hi, I'm Mark London and this is the Evening Standards Tech and Science Daily. Coming up, the secrets behind virtual reality surgery on Earth and in space. But first, scientists are examining the building blocks of galaxies 12 billion years ago, or essentially the early days of the universe. Instead of using the light from other galaxies, Princeton University researchers use the very light of creation as part of their investigation. They're looking at the microwaves released by the Big Bang at the dawn of the universe. The team's been using the Subaru Hyper Supreme Cam survey to identify around 1.5 million galaxies where light's not been seen since 1.7 billion years after the Big Bang. And then ESA satellite data is used to measure cosmic microwaves to see the galaxy's earliest phase. It comes as stunning images were released from the James Webb Space Telescope showing a cartwheel galaxy and two smaller companion galaxies that were created from an intergalactic collision. Now, you've heard the excellent news this week that two twins with their brains fused together had been successfully separated by surgeons with a little help from virtual reality technology. VR is transforming the medical world, and we spoke to Richard Scott, co-founder of Fundamental VR, who's developed VR tech, enabling surgeon training sessions to help them drill for complex operations. The system that we use, Fundamental Surgery, combines virtual reality that gives our surgeons situational awareness. They feel like they're in an operating room. We then combine that with a haptic technology that allows them to feel the patient, the tools, and interact and see and feel how that patient reacts to them. The tech from the London company aims to help reduce the need for training on real-world human bodies. There's a gene therapy that cures blindness in children and uh, the only way you can learn that gene therapy procedure, the, the surgical procedure, is through our platform. We've trained over 150 surgeons worldwide. They've gone on and cured blindness in over 500 children. Well, meanwhile, scientists are preparing a mini robot with little rubber hands for remote surgical procedures 200 miles above the Earth on the International Space Station. The robot is set to be tested, and it's hoped that the autonomous droid could be used to repair an astronaut's ruptured appendix on a mission to Mars if the trials by the end of 2024 are successful. Now, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln has been given $100,000 by NASA to get the project into space. The device is called Mira, or Miniaturized In Vivo Robotic assistant and it will conduct its tests in small experiments in a cupboard while aboard the ISS. The website of Taiwan's president Tsai Ing-wen was brought down by a cyber attack just hours before the tense arrival of Nancy Pelosi on a US Air Force plane. A spokesperson for the president's office says the attack came from outside of Taiwan, which saw the site hit with over 200 times its usual amount of traffic. Although the government said the website was only down for 20 minutes and no hackers have taken responsibility, it comes amid warnings from China that resolute and strong measures would be taken if Pelosi's trip were to happen. <laughs> London Mayor Sadiq Khan is giving police more access to data from around 2,000 road cameras operated by Transport for London. Previously, traffic officers only had access to specific ANPR cameras in central London, but now they have full access to images across the capital's ultra-low emission zone. Police say the access is key to ensuring correct identification of vehicles, but the Open Rights Group privacy campaign is to challenge the Mayor's decision in court. Footballers Harry Maguire and Cristiano Ronaldo are two of the eight Manchester United players suffering the most online abuse. A report by Ofcom has found the pair being hit with the most trolling. After the Alan Turing Institute analysed 2.3 million tweets in the first half of last season, which revealed about 60,000 abusive posts, and half of those abusive posts were aimed at just 12 players, eight of who played for Manchester United. But slightly better news for human nature was the Alan Turing Institute found that the majority of fans actually use social media responsibly. Let's go to the ads. Stay there for more news from the world of tech and science. Plus, why cheerful children quickly become unhappy teenagers. And it's all down to life satisfaction. Why not hit rate and follow in the meantime? Welcome back. 
in a slight swipe to the left. Yes, Tinder's parent company is to scale back plans for the use of technology such as virtual currencies and dating in the metaverse, which all follows announcement of a disappointing second quarter earnings. Match Group also announced a series of changes and departures from its management team, including Tinder chief exec Renata Nyborg, after a failure to meet growth expectations for revenue in a shareholder letter, Match Group CEO Bernard Kim says a return to everyday life after COVID-19 lockdowns found the number of singletons trying dating apps for the first time not returned to the levels seen before the pandemic. And finally, it's a mystery as old as time why happy children quickly plunge into becoming moody teenagers. Now a study has shed some light on teenagers' experience, saying they felt the fastest fall overall in happiness levels of any age group. The study by the University of Cambridge used results from a UK household survey between 2009 and 2018 to investigate how happy 91,000 British participants aged between 10 and 80 years old. When researchers looked at questions around how happy teenagers were with life, they found that this age group saw the steepest fall in satisfaction and overall happiness compared to other ages. You're up to date. Come back at 4pm for the Leader Podcast from the Evening Standard here in London. And we'll be back tomorrow at 1pm. See you then.